So before Studio Graphene, I worked at a large consultancy called Accenture um, for a number of years. And after that, I moved to a slightly smaller specialist financial services management consultancy called Capco. I then worked directly for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, as an independent consultant, and essentially used that as um, as, as a basis to save up some money and um, be able to start Studio Graphene. It was always a dream to be entrepreneurial. Um, I love businesses, I love the idea, that, and I in particular love small businesses. I think there's something really special about small businesses, what they do for the world in terms of how agile they can be in terms of innovating and doing new things. So I always had this passion for wanting to either work for a small business or create a small business or work with a small business that works with other small businesses, which is what we're doing now. Um, but that, that's always been a passion and it was, it was more that I felt that I didn't have, I think one of the challenges with starting small businesses is, is inherent with risk and I needed to feel comfortable with taking that risk. So it just took me a long time to get to a point where I felt comfortable with taking that risk and taking that leap of faith, um, giving up a career and going after um, building a business. So funnily enough, I consulted for banks. The reason I joined a consultancy was because I did not want to work for a bank. Um, so when I was graduating, all my friends and I studied at the London School of Economics, literally the, the, most of the graduates from there, because it's a London-based university and it, there are a lot of courses that are based around finance and economics, etc. Most of my friends were going into working for banks at the time. I did not want to work for a bank, so I applied to a consultancy center. Uh, but then the first thing they do was put me on a project for a bank. And then the problem with consultancy is that once you do one project, you're a specialist in that space. So then you're a specialist banking consultant. So now your next project has to be with the bank. So I, so I ended up working with uh, specifically investment banks and a lot of uh, top tier investment banks throughout my career. And consulting for them both on technology and um, on kind of the strategy and, and when the financial crisis started. Um, a lot of the banks were merging, so I worked specifically on helping that uh, transition and integration take place. Um, and, and whilst it wasn't my dream, it in a way uh, was a big part of the journey and I think it actually worked quite well because I ended up um, A, working with one of the things banks do end up doing is attracting a lot of very smart people to work for them. And so I was surrounded by very smart people. Uh, it's a, it's a fast-paced environment, um, it's quite dynamic. Uh, and it teaches you how to work in, in a challenging space. So in those, in, in, all, in all those kind of areas, it worked out really well. I just didn't love the industry. Um, and, and actually, you know, fast forwarding a bit, we, we do some, do some work with banks, and I suddenly find it interesting. And I think what happened was I realized working in a big structure is you don't get to influence change or have an yeah. impact. And, and so that's kind of been a learning curve as so well. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I wanted to start a startup. Uh, I wanted to ideally build a product potentially. And as part of that, um, that, that kind of process, I realized that actually there weren't that many teams that existed in London to help you build a product from scratch as a startup. Um, as a startup, I can go away and find a designer, find an engineer, find someone who will help product manage it, etc. find all the different skill sets and bunch them together. That is something that's quite time consuming. It takes me a long time to create that team, to manage that team. Um, whereas I can just get a plug in my team. But the problem was that other agencies or professional services firms I felt could cater to the needs of startups in terms of how adaptable they were, how agile they were. Uh, so effectively I said, okay, I'm gonna build a startup to build startups. And that's basically what Studio Graphene is. Um, we build startups and we are a startup ourselves. I think there's one sort of challenge is, the, 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 the main thing is that, the main challenge is you don't know what challenges you want to encounter. Yeah. And I think, you know, you read a lot of books and uh, you hear a lot of advice. And there's this, one of the books actually is called The Hard Thing About Hard Things. But it really explains it really well. Challenges, that it is hard and, you know, you're not, you will, you will wake up uh, in the morning and you don't know what your day is going to be like because you're the single point of escalation, right? And the buck stops with you. So 
it all kind of rolls towards you when you have to firefight everything. Uh, but you don't know what you're going to have to firefight. You just know there'll be potentially HR issues, potentially clients who are upset, potentially issues with the product, um, potentially funding or financing issues, but you don't know what they're going to be until they hit you. I think that's been the biggest challenge for me, is that element of surprise and that, that anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen. And I think added on top of that, when you have your own startup and it's small, uh, the impact associated with everything is really big. So the highs are really high and the lows are really low. So you know, something happens and I'm really sad and it might not be a big deal. And something that happens that is positive and I'm super happy and it's like almost exaggerated happiness. You know, it's not such a big deal again. And so riding those waves is a big challenge as well. Uh, but the most important thing is I think through all of that you have to be confident and be steadfast in your belief in terms of what you're trying to create and not it's very easy to doubt yourself because people who doubt you um, you feel insecure and you come across these challenges so all these difficult things will happen but i think remaining resilient remaining focused is really important we so when i say we are a startup that builds startups uh, breaking that down means that we work on black canvas projects so we work with people who are right at the beginning of the journey uh, but are serious about turning an idea into reality. So our, our premise is that you and I can talk here, come up with 10 different ideas. Um, it's not difficult. The hard part is taking those ideas and doing something with them. And it, the, the execution is what we believe is what makes the idea really valuable. So we want to assist startups in doing that. We think innovation is a great thing and makes the world a better place. Uh, but there isn't enough innovation happening because people are scared of innovation. They think it's, you know, the failure associated with it is high. They think there's a lot of risk, it's expensive, it's slow. And what we're trying to do is try and take away some of the challenges associated with innovating. So trying to make it more efficient, trying to make it, uh, trying to increase the chance of success, trying to make it faster, trying to make it cheaper. Uh, and the way we're doing it in, in a very simple way is we have an interdisciplinary team that focuses purely on doing it. So we specialize in it. By doing it again and again, we become good at it. So um, we probably built 50 startups, and um, through that process, the next time you're better, the next time you're better. You know, I look back in our first year, then the year we look back and we're like, ah, oh, we used to do the silly things. The next year you think the same, the next year you think the same way. And now we look back and we've come a long way, and I just think all the things that we've learned is effectively that, that learning is given for free to founders we work with. Um, and, and, and that comes straight out of the box. Whereas, you know, for those founders to have to go through that and put together a team, etc. So having that plug and play startup team is effectively what we provide. And we try and address all the challenges that farmers have, such as how can we guarantee this is going to be delivered to this level of quality, this amount of time, etc. So a lot of our work is underwritten in terms of um, what the time commitment is and the fee is as well. 100% and I think through that process I learned something quite valuable which is that skills can be taught but soft skills uh, in terms of attitude etc aren't. They are much much harder at least to be taught. So I think in the beginning my view was okay I need an iOS developer, I need an Android developer, I need a front end developer, I need a back end developer. Whereas now my attitude is completely different. Um, if I find someone with a great attitude I believe that and I believe it's a good cultural fit. I I think they can learn the skills and adapt and play an important role. So the, the, the important thing is to understand your values and to be able to read the soft skills that are important to your business that are complementary. Um, also recognizing that diversity is important. So our whole team is very different, uh, not just culturally, but in terms of their views on life, their um, attitude to things, etc. So, they're very different, but they that allows, but they have to respect everyone else's opinion as well. So, whilst they bring all these different views to the table and different perspectives, which is amazing, some of their core values have to be consistent. So, the core values that you think are important to your culture as a startup, those need to be consistent, right? So, for instance, we from the beginning decided one of our core the values would be empathy because we're working with startups that are going through a challenging time and it's not easy building it. So anyone we hire, we have to feel that empathy will be important to them as an individual, otherwise they're not a good fit. So I think deciding what those core values are 
but people might have different perspectives on how you should build things, how you should design things, how you should run projects. That's what well. we don't have standardized processes. In fact, in many ways, when we hire someone, I say, "Welcome to chaos," because you know we do things differently, and different people within the team do things differently, and we encourage that. I worked as a contractor, uh, as an independent consultant, uh, that allowed me to save money, um, and I basically clouded all my savings into studiography. As simple as that. So I weaned myself off carefully. I used to work five days a week as a contractor, take all the money, put it into studiography, hired my first couple of employees, um, and worked in the evenings to kind of keep it for I wasn't even employed number one because I was working to fund the employees that were working in studiography. I then moved four days a week, three days a week, two days a week, and then I realized that you know, at some point I'm just going to be full time in studiography. Um, and so I self-funded it, and that's been an interesting journey. Uh, and I wonder if that was the right thing or the wrong thing, but that's the route I went down. Um, the hard part is, I think, is a so we are a services business, and whilst we're trying to build some intellectual property to assist us providing our service in a more efficient way, we are a services business, and um, finding funding for a services business is quite difficult, oddly enough, because people see it as a working capital. Uh, they don't see it as any way building a product that tomorrow is going to give you a return. And the, but the issue with us is that we're a services business with a client base that doesn't really have much money. So whereas typically you know, the smart thing to do is if you go to the services business, you find a target market that has lots of money to pay your fees. Um, so, so that, from a funding perspective, was quite challenging for us because I had to effectively fund providing a service for people who didn't have the money to fund receiving that service and I think the, the how hard we have to work to get to earn our fees is much harder than if we were to go out to a corporate doing very standard enterprise projects. I think in innovation to provide a service you have to really work hard because people don't have that much innovation budget no matter what they say they don't actually have true you know, whether it's a startup or a corporate they're not willing to allocate enough money to get on a new idea. Um, so that's the, the funding aspect has been quite Quite difficult because uh, it's not been easy to generate the fees, it's not been easy to get someone to back you on doing this because they don't see you as a business that can generate huge fees. So. There's such a huge range, like sometimes I'll see an idea get funded with loads of money, and sometimes I'll see an idea that's great but struggling to get funding. So it always confuses me. I think a lot of it is. I believe personally, and I don't really, you know, studiography in a business takes equity in some startups is, is, is to align interests or in lieu of some of our fees, but really we're not investors and I don't really have that investor mindset. But one of the things I always find interesting is investors have this view that uh, you need to have a good team, you need to have a good idea, uh, you know, good numbers and so on. And I just feel like some of that information is. Is, is just what's you know pen on paper and what you put on your presentation. So sometimes I see startups which have presented their team, their concept, etc., in a good way, but you know because we're actually working with them, we can differentiate at the granular level that this startup is better according to us, this startup's worse. But the guys who seem to project and create a perception that they have uh, better uh, capability seem to win. So I do think there is this element of investors get caught out by the perception the founder is trying to create. Like for instance, I rarely see an investor try and interrogate the actual technology and the code base behind the product. Rarely have I seen an investor go, hey, I'd like to do an audit on the actual product we're funding. Um, but it'll always be like, what's your projected revenue, what's the team skills, etc. Hang on, should you not be actually a product? So I do believe that the basis on which people are raising um, funding is, is in my opinion always uh, fair meritocratic and I do think that's a challenge. One of the things that really helped me take that leap of faith was someone used a phrase with me that um, someone said to me you're free to fail and that really carried and I kept saying to myself am like, oh, I free to fail? Yeah I'm kind of free to fail yeah I'll really be sad but am I free to fail? Yeah and I think I think there is it's a fine balance because the fear of failure also drives you forward. But too much fear of failure also paralyzes you. So, you know, studiography, we've been through some really tough times. You know, when I've kind of not seen the light at the end of the tunnel and like, oh, we really 
we're running out of funding. I don't see a pipeline. Well, I don't. I don't really see how we can pull out of this. And that and the fear that builds up inside you that will happen. We shut down, etc. Some to some extent, it drives you and energizes you. But beyond a certain point, it does paralyze you, and you're just you know, you're just exhausted with stress trying to think, uh, and you can't think straight. So. I do think that fear that is there is beyond the point is not helpful. Uh, and, and, and I think that's the biggest hindrance to people actually taking that leap of faith and building a startup. I think it's sometimes the biggest hindrance to taking a startup to the next stage. So it, it's something that definitely needs, there needs to be more, more needs to happen to allow people to be able to build. The most satisfying thing is that I believe, and maybe I'm drinking our own Kool-Aid. I believe that startups exist today um, that wouldn't have existed if we weren't there. Um, and I believe those startups do quite a lot to make the world a better place. It might be in a very small way, it might not be you know, hugely impactful, but I do think in some way they, they take us as a society forward. So for me, the like, ability to make impact through enabling other businesses to innovate is, is impact. To achieve whether and it doesn't, you know, we've talked a lot about startups, and I think startups for me is less about the actual startup businesses, but it's a, it's a way of running and doing things. So, to me, a corporate can be a startup, uh, an individual can be a startup, a uh, small business can be a startup, it doesn't matter, a 50 year old business can be a startup. It's the way you actually do things, it's having that approach to. Every, every problem as if it's a black canvas problem and there is no some cost associated with it. It's that kind of beginner's mind. That approach is a startup approach. You can have it in any environment. And I think us being able to, when someone has that approach and wants to take a, a step forward that is from a completely blank slate, helping them take that step forward and enabling that by delivering on that step is the impact we want to have. So I think being grounded 100% is my number one tip. And uh, it's just because when you, the excitement at the early stages, that's why I was saying kind of, you know, the wave seemed a lot bigger. So you're like, wow, this is a big deal. We're doing really well. Whoa, no, this is a disaster. And I think just kind of taking each step uh, in its stride and, and not making a big deal out of it is really important. Um, I think the second thing is that you really, really need to accept that your views might be different to other people's because you have usually an idea and it's, it's a startup is driven by either an idea that's not been done before or doing something that's been done before differently, etc. And so to accept that what you're doing is in some way against the grain and you have to believe in it. If you don't, be honest with yourself. But if you do, be honest with yourself as well. Take other people's advice, but don't, don't always be swayed too much in either direction. Be, be confident about your point of view uh, around it. And I think the third thing is transparency with your team. Uh, I think having a clear, uh, you know, having ha having other people along, it can be quite lonely, especially for me because I didn't have a co-founder when I started. But one of the things about a startup is, in a way, it's quite lonely because a lot of times you're working, you know, alone or you know, it's in the early stages, three, four of you, you just you know working through it, you're not even surrounded by loads of colleagues, etc. So I think having radical transparency and trusting people and bouncing ideas off, etc. is quite important. Just find a way of somehow offloading the information that's there in your head with other people and sharing it so that you can hear their views as well. It's a really good question. Uh, and I really can it be a project we're working on? So I'd say, and I'm going to be a bit uncontroversial here, uh, it's, a, it's an internal project that we're working on, uh, and it's called Define. So we always said that we will not, um, will not, never be a business that builds another business in to run it. We will be a business that helps other people create businesses. And so that makes it a bit, um, it, it, it makes it a strange we are building something. And the only reason we're building something is because we believe that the process by which you build things today is not efficient. 
Um, so we are building a product called Define, and we think the whole challenge is when you have an idea, before you even start building it, the step that you take as a startup between having that idea and defining it in terms of its requirements and what it entails so that it's a specification essentially that a developer can build. That's where a lot gets lost in translation. And it's a whole architect's analogy, right? If you, if you create the model for a building, it's cheaper than building the building and then tearing it down uh, because you make a mistake. If you do the drawings for a model before you build the model, it's cheaper than building the model and breaking it, redoing it if you build a sketch, etc. So the further that having that single point of truth and then kind of drilling down into more and more detail is, I think, really important. I think startups really struggle when they go, I have an idea, and how do I channel this idea and everything associated with it and bring everyone in line in terms of the different stakeholders, the designers, the investors, the developers, etc., into one kind of unified unit. And we're basically building a product that helps guide you through it. Um, and it, it's a way of capturing all that information in a way that can be synthesized and structured so that different stakeholders can use it and contribute to it. So, Sounds like a bit of a geeky project, but I think the, the reason I'm so excited about it and the work we're doing around it is A, because it's had a decent amount of validation. Like we have clients who've said that they'll use it once it's ready, and we think that it really furthers our mission forward. So, so right, right now, I'd say that's our favorite project, but loads of cool projects uh, that we're working on. So uh, it was quite a good choice there. You'll always regret. Uh, what you haven't done. You rarely regret what you have done. So I think if you want to try something um, and you're scared and that's the only reason you're trying, not trying it, that's the only reason. Give it a shot. It's very rare that you regret trying to do something.